Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and welcome to So You Want to Make a Sound Challenge Edition, Part 1. After I uh, made my So You Want to Make a Sound Introduction to Sound Design video, which you can watch, link in description, uh, I reached out to my patrons and was like, hey, do you have any songs that have sounds in them that you would like to try to figure out how they're made? And I will try to make them in a video. We could talk about sound design, how to listen to sounds, and just how to approach the whole thing um, and see how close we can get. So I have a list of songs and uh, little timestamps where we're going to listen to things and try to recreate the sounds. Starting with this track from one of my favorite bands called The National. This track is called I Am Easy To Find and Quest is for the Whaley type pad synth that creeps in at 122 and the quarter note boops at 151. If you ever come around. I hear a, uh, a stringed instrument um, in the background going you can hear it sort of having a uh, stringy quality doing that. And then there's this sort of like top thing that sounds like kind of a recorder or a mellotron. If you ever come around. I knew this was going to be a difficult one to start with because it is a band and not um, an electronic thing. Um, and so one of the best ways um, we can look into this is whether or not there's a recording of this band playing this live so we can see what is being played. So I'm easy to find live. All right. So we've got piano, we've got a backup singer. I really love this band, by the way. You should check out The National if you like sad songs with deep voices. All right, well, I see guitar. They've got brass. Let's go back to 122. Guitar, bass, piano. They do have a keyboardist. All right, this isn't telling us a goddamn thing. So. Let's do this. Uh, I think it's a cello. Let's do cello. And I think it's a Mellotron flute. That's what I would do to get this sound. So we will. If you ever come around, this Boo -doo -doo -doo. A lot of the times when I want to do sound design, I will try to get the lines in um, so that I at least have the notes right. And slow this way down. By getting the notes in, you uh, at least can start listening uh, to it from a, uh, a music perspective and understanding that, um, you know, the, the thing needs to be in a particular octave. It needs to uh, be played a certain way in order to actually uh, have the, um, the feeling that we're going for. Okay, cool. So Mellotron. Um, I don't know if this is the case, but it really does sound like Mellotron. I need to find some lower thinking. There's also a lot of high-end air going on um, in the mix. So uh, there's always going to be some form of sort of like EQ and compression stuff. Nothing really makes it to tape um, on its own. So yeah, uh, let's go back into my instruments. Instead of just reaching for contact, I'm going to use the complete control VST here. And that's because I can actually search for mellow. Now, the Mellotron flute has a very distinctive vibrato that Gonna copy this here and we need to go up an octave or so here uh actually more okay so their sound has like some attack on it so let's to get more of that sort of room sound in there i think we're going to grab the hybrid reverb and use um like a big like convolution reverb I want something that's bright and roomy. <laughs> I'm still standing in the same place where you left me standing. And that's that's that. That's as far as I can get into that. So cello, Mellotron, 
EQ and Reaper. That's it. The next question in this was the quarter note boops at 151. Uh, do you mean those things? Uh, that sounds like a pretty... It's actually, it says a really great gesture, actually. I really like that. Let's go ahead. Go ahead and get this short up to our tempo here. All right, so that's about there. Uh, let's warp this and get this to tempo. This track, but once you warp something properly, uh, it gets the tempo right down here. So we're about at 68.25, but you know we gotta go to 69. Come on. All right. So again, we're going to uh, program in the pitch first. I really like that. That's wonderful. All right. So uh, let us make a MIDI clip and start working on that. I guess we're going to use pigments. Unless I'm going to have to put this video out after the new pigments gets announced because uh, here we are with the new pigments. Simple sine wave to start. Actually, let's go to triangle so I can hear a little bit better pitch. It's really hard to hear uh, pitches on sine waves. Close enough. So uh, the first thing I can hear about this sound is that it's mellow. And we talked about um, identifying the brightness of sound as being one of the first steps that we want to do um, when we want to make a sound, because we need to uh, know what wave shape we're going to reach for first. We need to know uh, how much our filter is going to be working for us and what our wave shape is going to do. The second thing I hear about this is it's very plucky, plucky in a way that makes me think we are dealing with uh, a bit of a exponential envelope, meaning um, see our curve right here for our, our envelope. Watch what happens when I go like that. That's called logarithmic. This is called linear. And this with this super plucky look right here, bloop. It's called exponential. Exponential envelopes are wonderful. They're very uh, percussive and natural sounding. So I think we're going to uh, use a triangle wave. Okay, so the next thing I hear about this sound is it's very sort of what I would call inflated, uh, for lack of a better term. It's very warm and upfront, and that to me screams um, saturation. So we have a couple ways we can do that. I'm going to go into our filter here, and I'm going to change it from the the normal uh, multi mode filter to I think okay the mini filter has drive. What else has drive? Probably just the mini filter, right? Okay, let's start turning up our drive. So we have that click right at the beginning. You can see it on our envelope BCA here. We don't want that. There is no click in the original sound. I also believe this sound is mono. I believe it's coming from a monophonic synth. So I'm going to go and change our mode to mono so we don't have any overlap in our notes because I do not hear that in theirs at all. Uh, let's go into our effects and um, see what we can do here. So I'm going to add an EQ. We're going to give ourselves just a tiniest bit of filter modulation because I do hear a slight amount of movement to that sound that we're not getting with just our uh, VCA, our volume envelope. So let's go to envelope two and assign this to our filter. And 
smooth off. Smooth off the attack there. No resonance. There we go. That is so much better. Awesome. I think that's about as close as I would, uh, I'd want to get for this exercise. So let's review. We listened to the original sound. And we heard that it was pretty mellow, but had a little bit of what I would call sort of an inflated edge to it, meaning that it's very present and and um, sort of girthy. It's inflated and we knew we were going to use a pretty mellow waveform, um, but it had sort of an inflated, saturated quality to it in that it was like very sort of present um, in a way that we didn't get when we just used the triangle wave. So I knew I wanted to drive it some. When we drove it, we heard that we started adding some upper harmonics because drive adds harmonics, at least in the model of this filter. We spend a lot of time mostly on our envelopes because our envelopes are really, really important in shaping the way this sound works. We changed our keyboard mode to mono so we didn't get any overlap in our individual notes. We used a really simple VCA. We took the attack off a little bit to mellow out the sound, which gave us a little bit of attitude right there at the beginning. Next, we decided that we weren't getting quite enough shaping with just an envelope VCA and a driven triangle. I could actually see here what sounded like a little bit of filter movement in there in a change of brightness over time. And it's really hard to hear because it's super buried in the mix. We used a second envelope to adjust the cutoff frequency of our filter and give us some movement there. Finally, we went over to our effects. We added some EQ. To boost a few frequencies, uh, again, sort of focusing on the uh, clarity, but also the body of the sound here and take a little bit of the high end off and then some extra drive to, again, push it up further um, because like you never know what kind of like preamp that sound was run through. And when you drive um, clean sounds, they just kind of get bigger. If we were to add some reverb onto this, we'd have a really nice pluck. It's real nice. All right, let's go back to the keyboard. And let us uh, go back to mono. I want to try one more thing, and that's adding a tiny bit of glide. Like literally, just the smallest amount. Too much. And while it does sound very cool, it, uh, it adds too much wonkiness. But just a tiny little bit of glide uh, adds a tiny organic feeling um, of pitch to the note beginnings, which is really, really cool. So I hope that was useful to you. We first tried to get our pitches in, the sequence in, into Ableton, using our ears listening so that we could match the actual music that we were listening to. And then we worked on the sound itself. Um, if you try to make a sound without the original pitch sort of in mind, without the original pitch sequence, um, it's going to be a lot harder. So uh, when you do want to try something like this, do also you know try to program the sequence in, um, which will teach you about how to do notes and and how to um, listen for that kind of thing. Thanks for watching. There are many more of these to come. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Music Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.